that, fans, we are back with EOS Land Viewer and having a look at how we can use different band combinations this time. Very interesting part of remote sensing. And if I go up to my satellite, you can see that I'm still in Sentinel 2. Got this particular image selected. And if I go onto the band combinations button, we have a whole host of band combinations that we can use. And as I pointed out in the free version, you can hang over the eye and click it and it'll tell you what that band combination is all about. So different band combinations will allow us to see different things. Uh, agriculture, for example, if we look at this one, uh, bright green represents vigorous, healthy vegetation. So let's have a look at that one and it'll tell you what bands it's using. Now in remote sensing, we usually go red, green, blue, and that will tell you which band from the satellite imagery is being used through which color gun and different combinations obviously give you different ways of interrogating your image. So it might reveal things that you couldn't normally see with just the optical um, spectrum and that's pretty useful for remote sensing scientists. So that's our default band combinations but you can also build your own so if I go up to this custom tab and click on that and use new band combination. So there we go. Currently we're at the natural color and you can see which bands are going through which color guns. So here we've got band four through the red color gun, band three through the green and band two through the blue color gun. Now if I wanted to change this to say for example color infrared, I can just pick up band eight slide it into the red, band four into the green, and band three into the blue. And there we go, I've got the color infrared band combination. Now that was available on the default ones, so might not be hugely useful, but you can build your own color combinations here, band combinations. You could also look at single bands. So if I was to have a look at the near infrared band, I can have a look at a single band in isolation. And if you don't want it grayscale, you can also change your palette. Wow, look at that. The other thing you can do is build your own indices. And there's quite a lot of work going on in the field, uh, working out how different indices can be built and what they reveal for particular sensors. We've got a default one down here, band eight minus band four divided by band eight plus band four. Now you can search around on the web and find other indices that might be useful for the work that you're doing. I found this one and um, this is for the structure intensive pigment index one and this will apparently let you view vegetation and take out the interference of complex canopy structure. Do some research on that before using it so you understand exactly what you're using. But you can see here the basic formula is band 8 minus band 1 divided by band 8 minus band 4. So if we go into land viewer, band 8 minus band 1 and band 8 minus band 4. I'm going to change my palettes to grey. There we go. And you can see we've got a nice little uh, legend down here that tells us what values we're getting. So I might need to play around with that a little bit more to get it right. But the good thing is that this will update in real time. So you can actually see what's happening in terms of your indices in real time in the EOS Land Viewer platform. So very, very useful. Um, it is worth having a play around with these things. And it's quite nice, as I said, to be able to use different band combinations, different indices, prior to actually downloading any data at all. You can just do it through the portal of EOS Land Viewer. So that's all for today, and thanks very much for watching. It's much appreciated. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, uh, don't forget to subscribe, and leave a comment if you'd like to. Happy mapping.